The crew always looking for new experiments, and uh, when the next Dragon cargo ship, uh, the SpaceX vehicle, arrives at the International Space Station later this month, it'll be carrying some 5,000 pounds of supplies and science hardware. Uh, one of the new uh, devices and experiments flying up, though, has a pretty minimal weight because it consists primarily of microbes. Uh, it's called Project Mercury, uh, standing for the Microbial Ecology Research Combining Citizen and University Researchers, and it involved uh, the gathering of microbes from a lot of locations down here on Earth, sending them to space, and having the astronauts take some samples on board the station and send those back down to Earth. Microbiologist uh, Dr. David Coyle of the University of California, Davis, is a co-investigator on the project, and I got to talk to him a little bit earlier this week. It started out by asking just why they were uh, hoping to send microbes to space. Well, the first reason, of course, is just because it's awesome. We get to send microbes into space. Uh, but the scientific reason is that we're interested in how well various microbes collected from built environments on Earth grow in microgravity. Tell me a little bit about the crowdsourcing element of this project, because you, you guys got the public kind of directly involved in gathering some of these samples. Yeah, so this project is at its heart as much about outreach as it is science. So there's numerous aspects to this project, um, including collecting thousands of, of samples around the country from, from people that came to these events where we collected the microbes that we're also sending into space that are being analyzed for a, sort of a map of what microbes live where and how that compares to what's living on the International Space Station. But we really, from the beginning, wanted to engage the public in helping collect the samples. All the data will be available on our website. People will be able to follow the growth of the microbes in space on our website. And we really wanted to sort of connect with the public and communicate these basic ideas that we're interested in, which is that microbes are everywhere and most of them aren't scary. And kind of following your statement that they're everywhere, I, I hear you guys got some samples from some pretty interesting locations as well. Yeah, we, we collected microbes from all sorts of interesting places. We, we got some from the Liberty Bell. Uh, we collected from a number of, of sporting events, you know, uh, a Spurs game in San Antonio, uh, the 50-yard line at Candlestick Park where the, the San Francisco 49ers play, AT&T Park where the the Giants play, a number of uh, Sue the T-Rex, the, the skeleton in the Field Museum, all sorts of interesting locations um, where people were, were engaged in, in collecting microbes. So to switch gears a little bit, um, I'm understanding you're also involved with somebody called the Science Cheerleaders. Who and what exactly are they and how'd they get involved in the project? So the Science Cheerleaders are a nationwide organization of about 250 current and former NFL and NBA cheerleaders who are pursuing or have postgraduate degrees in, in math and science fields. And so they already do a whole lot of wonderful outreach around the country talking to, to kids about how science can be cool and about how you could have a career as a professional cheerleader and have a Ph.D. in biochemistry, for example. And uh, they actually are the ones who originally conceived of this project because they wanted to use their network of outreach context to do some real science instead of just talking about how cool science is. And so they approached us to sort of take care of the microbiology end of things. And to kind of get back to the science, what exactly, you know, are you guys hoping to learn from this? What are you going to be looking for uh, upon further study of all these microbes uh, either on the station or back here on Earth? Well, there's, there's sort of two different questions, I guess. The first is, you know, we'd like to know what's living on the International Space Station. Uh, people have done work previously where they've, they've grown up and, and looked for various pathogens, so, so disease-causing microbes, because that's something, obviously, NASA is concerned about. But there hasn't been a lot of work on looking at the ecosystem as a whole. So the astronauts are going to collect samples around the space station. We're going to extract DNA from those samples and look at all the microbes that are present, just sort of a who is there and in what abundance kind of, of survey. And we're going to compare those results to similar work that we and others are doing in, in various built environments here on Earth. Um, 
sort of related to that is the microbes that we're sending to the space station that will be grown up by the astronauts. And in that case, we're asking, how do these microbes behave in microgravity? It's been shown from some previous work that some microbes grow differently in microgravity than they do on Earth. Uh, but most of that work, again, has been focused on disease-causing microbes. All of the ones that we're sending are good or neutral microbes from the perspective of human health, and we're interested on how they behave in space. Well, it's definitely a fascinating and a new take on uh, some uh, existing studies. Uh, and like you said, a big part is public engagement. So what's the website people can follow along and keep up with the research on? So people can check us out on spacemicrobes.org or on Twitter. We use the hashtag spacemicrobes. All right. Well, hopefully everybody can uh, check that out. We'll throw up a lower third uh, with that uh, address. And again, uh, Dr. David Coyle of the University of California at Davis, co-investigator on the Mercury Project. Thanks so much for calling in, giving us an inside look at uh, this exciting experiment. We'll definitely follow along ourselves. All right. Thanks so much for having me.